I am now going to show you how to run trains from your uh, laptop or desktop or tablet for that matter. And uh, all you need to do is first you have to download the JMII uh, program onto your computer. It's called JMRI, which stands for Java Model Railroad Interface. You also have to have a NCE USB interface, which goes between your computer and the plug that you normally would put a remote control in. What it does is your, com your computer then becomes a very sophisticated remote control for your trains on your layout. Then if you have your trains loaded in to this program, which I have all my various locomotives, which on another program I'll show you how to load those into here. Once you've got them in here, you just click on them and click on throttle and it brings up a throttle whereby you can run your trains. As you can see, I've got it set so if I click on just one or two, it moves at a nice slow speed. I can bring it back down to zero by clicking on idle. Then I can put it on reverse and again start the speed the speed backwards nice and slow so obviously my voltage uh, starting voltage is, is set correctly I'm very happy with it I will show you how we will change that in case your locomotive doesn't react the way this one does bring it back down to zero we can set so we can hear the bell and the horn everything you can run the entire train and the entire layout from the JMRI program now let's say that we want to make some changes to the CVs on this locomotive. We just go down here and click on program and up comes the screen that has the information in that number one. I typed some of this in when I loaded this locomotive into the system. Others, some of the information about the decoder, it got directly from the decoder in the locomotive. Once I've got it there, then I can go through the basics. Right now it's operating on the long address of 110. The primary is number 3, the long address is number 110. I've got it so it's running right now on the long address of number 10. Here again, you could change that to the short instead of the long if you wanted to. It talks about the different acceleration and deceleration rates and so on. This is the one where you change the starting voltage. Right now it's set at zero. This locomotive, because it's in really good shape, very good lubrication, whatever else, everything is good, is set at zero, so that works great. But let's just change it to something else, just for the sake of showing you what the difference is when you change the starting voltage. As soon as you put a new number in here, you have to go down to the bottom of the screen here and click on Write Changes. The changes that may made on this sheet will now be written turns red, that means now it is writing those changes to the decoder in that locomotive. So now the starting voltage for that locomotive is set at 60. Now if we were to go and click on 1, it takes off because we've got it set at such a high starting voltage. So that is not acceptable, so we don't want to leave it at that, but I just did it to show you how it would work. Since this locomotive works very well with it left at zero. I'm going to set it back at zero, go back down to the bottom again, and click on write changes on the sheet. So the only change I made on the sheet was that sometimes the locomotive moves to let you know that <clears throat> the CV has been written to the decoder in that locomotive. We have a choice of speed steps. We can either do what we just did using that starting speed voltage, or we can have it set up so that it uses the speeds that are listed on here. Here are the different uh, CVs that would change those various ones, but we can set it to a constant ratio, where here when you turn the knob, it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference until you got it set up to four, five, six, seven, eight, something, then it would start going higher. We can set it the other way around, so it starts off, when you turn the knob just a little bit, it starts changing the speed considerably. I prefer to leave it just as it was, 
as where it matches the ends and as I turn the numbers up little by little it increases the speed of the locomotive so we're not going to change that at all we can go here and see the functions if you wanted to change the function button on your uh, layout so that when you hit function one it does something other than the bell you could change this to a different one by clicking on that or if you change function two which is now set for the horn if you wanted that to be the bell you could change those there again nothing will change unless you go down and write changes down below let's go back up to the uh, the sound levels right now the master sound level on this locomotive is, is set at 80 the air horn or the uh, the horn on it is set at 220 and the volume is set at 40 now we could go here and make these changes to them without even knowing what CV that is. However, since I did the CVs when we were using the NCE power cab, let's use the CVs here again. Now, here's the one that we just changed from 0 and up to 60 and back down to 0. And we were happy with that. But let's decide that, okay, we want to change the volume of the bell. The bell was number 130. We go down here to 130. It's now set at 40. I'm happy with that. That works very well on my layout in my room. Let's just set it to 100. Okay, and now we're going to click on Write, and that will write that information to the CV in the decoder in that locomotive. Once it says Stored right here and shows the 100 in white, it is now set in that locomotive. So now if we go with the bell, it's much, much louder because we changed it from 40 to 100. Okay. Let's turn it back off, and since I don't want to leave it at that, I want to get it back to what I considered good for my locomotive in my layout. I'm going to set it back to 40. Each time you do any make any changes, though, so you have to write it. Now it's writing the CV number 130 back to 40 on the decoder that's in that locomotive. So everything there is set as, as we want it. It has other things that we can change like uh, here we have we did that one already and we did that we did that sound here's the one that we were talking about earlier right now the prime mover the sound of the locomotive doesn't start until we turn the knob to speed step number one which is what I like if you have a whole bunch of locomotives on the layout all set to go on when the power comes on it gets pretty noisy but here Prime Mover starts up when track is powered on. You can click on that up here and then write it, and then it will do it that way. But I prefer to have it this way so that the locomotive does not start until the sound of the diesel doesn't start until we go to step one. Otherwise, the layout can get pretty noisy. Now, since I went back and forth and changed these, I want to make sure it stays the same. So I'm going to write those changes. See, there's the ones that we went back and forth on. Now it's set back to go on on step number one. So now you've seen all the different things that you can change, both with CVs or with other screens that uh, you're able to pick things right from there without having to uh, know what the CVs are. However, it's always good to know what those CVs are so that if you want to make the changes on your standard NCE power cab or any of your cabs that you have on your layout, you can do them without having to go to the computer and your uh, programming track. Once you're finished with everything the way you want it, you can close that. Nope. First off, we have to save that. Save all the changes. We've saved all the changes to the locomotive, but we didn't save the changes to this program until you click on file and save. Now it'll stay this way on the program so when you bring it up next time you'll be able to see how everything is set because we saved it on the uh, file in the computer. Once you're done with that you just can close this program up here. You are now ready to run your locomotive either here from uh, your laptop or from your uh, standard setup whatever you've got set up in your layout and it's all set to go. We can uh, turn off the sound of the locomotive here, close up the throttle, and close up the program. Now you're ready to take your locomotive from here and put it on your layout, and everything will work as you set it.